Well, good morning and welcome to our Fridays with Seniors. And I'm honored to be your host this morning. And for the next few Fridays, we're going to interview some key people who are involved with the senior population in this great province of British Columbia, sharing with you their successes and some ways in which you and I and uh, hopefully the government can help uh, alleviate some of the issues that they have. So today, uh, my guests are Donald McKenzie, who's the BC, BC Cultural Diversity Association, and Sharon Ennis, who is the Legion Manor, Bo uh, Legion Manor Board member. And uh, they, call, they call them senior renters, um, which presumes to me that you rent the property that you're in right now, and you're sharing your wisdom, your understanding, so that people that are listening to this broadcast and watching this broadcast can come to some kind of assistance that you will describe as we get on a little later. So Donald, let's start with you. Tell me a little about your story and uh, what is a different approach for you to this issue with seniors and elders? Yeah, thanks uh, very much. I uh, can uh, probably claim as a friend uh, Harold Steves, and I'm sure that name is uh, known to you. And not many weeks ago, he was speaking to um, the main board of Metro Vancouver and talked about uh, a corporate contact that he had interested in uh, what they call stacked agriculture in uh, cities and truly affordable housing in proximity to that and wanting to uh, have an opportunity to uh, provide uh, some seniors in this uh, metropolitan area with uh, that opportunity to enrich their lives by uh, having, uh, from a monetary perspective, affordable housing and offer also opportunity to uh, contribute to their own lives and the lives of others by uh, being recruited as uh, employees with the uh, stacked agriculture. And I find it quite uh, fascinating and uh, um, that Steve's family, of course, an agricultural history going back to the late 1700s in the Maritimes to Brunswick and the great grandfather coming out. And so we have Steve's and so on and so forth. But uh, I just think that uh, everybody, as one's life advances, uh, you want to feel that you're uh, not only being served and helped in your later years, but you're continuing to be of uh, some service and help. Uh, to the community. And uh, the uh, recent uh, excellent film, uh, Angels on Call, in terms of those ladies who for decades have been providing uh, caring medical uh, help in the downtown east side. I spoke with one of them at uh, a premiere of that film. And she said to me that uh, many uh, seniors and others in the downtown east side are just terribly bored. They spend uh, hours in their uh, lousy little SRO rooms and uh, if they have opportunities to uh, contribute in that way and also years ago I spoke with the soul food guy when he was uh, starting that enterprise and he told me that uh, he had a dozen employees and some had said to them that uh, said to him that uh, if not for soul food uh, they might be no longer alive so anyway that's probably enough on that at the moment but I, I think that uh, uh, matching truly affordable housing and viable urban agricultural uh, initiatives might be uh, something of some importance in the years and decades ahead as uh, global supply lines become more and more vulnerable. So help me understand as, as what this broadcast is about. We're talking about uh, uh, housing and you, you use the term matching funds. I think you said something like that. Tell me exactly what that is and how much that might be. Uh, well, in, in, in terms of funds, my, my own personal situation, uh, I'm in my early 80s now, and uh, of course I have the uh, federal support, the OAS, the GIS, and uh, some CPP, and I also get the, uh, the um, contribution, uh, the safer contribution from the province, and so uh, my personal cash flow is not too far south of uh, 2000 a month, and I pay... Uh, approximately half of that for my rent uh, 
I stay in North Burnley. I have a basement suite. I've been there for more than a decade. And, uh, personally, I'm a, I'm very happy, but I realize that there are many others that are uh, much more vulnerable and uh, much more at risk. So what do you think this particular audience could do to help other than be aware of the issues that you're facing and other seniors are facing? Yeah, well, I think that uh, touching on the other aspect, uh, serving as I do uh, in the Board of BC Cultural Diversity, that uh, be open to the idea that uh, the, we have dozens and scores of cultures, of course, in this metropolitan area, in this province, and uh, there may be significant differences in various cultures in terms of how seniors are regarded and how particular cultures try to be helpful to seniors, and maybe there's sometimes some transition you have representatives of a particular culture here, but of course, they're the gestalt of the, the way that we do things. So I think just uh, um, an openness to, uh, okay, this, this culture, that culture, some other culture, what are the um, varieties of approaches to uh, seniors as part of the community? Sharon, let's, let's uh, turn to you as uh, you're on the Legion Manor board, or are you the president? Or are you just on that board? I'm the secretary treasurer. I've held the position for about eight or nine years. Um, I'm also involved a lot in the community. Uh, a lot of dealings with seniors, uh, the housing collaborative, the the um, community voices and everything else. So I, what I'm bringing to, to you today is not just my experience, but a collection, a collective voice from from all that I deal with, you know, representing the, the concerns and and the bits that that I've gleaned in my in my time out in the community. So tell me specifically, what are the ages approximately uh, we're talking about? Question one. Question two, specifically, what could this audience do to help you? Okay, the ages specifically would be 60 to the, uh, from age 60 to, to in their 90s is the oldest one, I think is 94. And what could this audience do? Maybe if they identify or know that there's these needs, there might be a, a way of uh, reaching out and just helping out. Um, for instance, uh, I help distribute meals at uh, the Guadara Temple provides uh, at the Legion Manor for the needy and, and for the people there. And in that, just them interacting or helping out with the distribution of meals, doing something, what we have is a population that's been uh, put to pasture, so to speak. And they, they went from being interactive community members to being kind of suspended and they they like to have a purpose they like to know that their voice is being heard and they don't when they're interacting and they're doing things they're they're communicating with each other and they're feeling alive again you know so this is the isolation is gone so uh you know your audience may have openings that could could put these people to use that the the worst thing about getting older is feeling useless or that you're in that in-between spot, you know, like you might as well just go stand on a funeral plot and wait to die, you know, um, where you used to be part of the community. So that's what, that's what I'm hoping for. What I hear you saying is the people in this age group, uh, people are viewing them as that they do not, they, they lack the abilities they once had, but what you're saying is they have, they have the abilities that are not being used by That's right. organizations out there. There, there are actually a wealth of res uh, a, a wealth of resources. You know, uh, having just their their um, lifetime uh, experiences and everything else that could help benefit or fill a gap. You know. Okay, give give me three or four things specifically that someone watching this could do today? Okay, uh, if you have, uh, for instance, okay, helping with the, with at the food banks, letting them come in and, and help fill a bag or direct or bring the information forward. Um, being out in the community and uh, 
answering questions about the community or how it was or whatever, when you have representations at uh, at uh, the the museum or at City Hall or whatever on the history, have those people there, have them be the living history. Um, and young people, have, have them interact with young people, whether it be at a community center or whatever, to pass their stories on. Uh, they're a forgotten voice now. Hmm. You, you mean the, the el elderly people are forgotten voices? Yeah, the, the elderly people, yeah. So how do we get their voices heard? By people recognizing that they're still there to be heard, you know, um, it's just as mystifying to the, as we talked about, about this podcast for 40 or 50 years ago, this wouldn't have been, um, people have forgotten about just basic communication. So this means that having the, the ability to interact, uh, whether they go and they uh, say a school is doing a, a presentation on the history of the province or something, have somebody there and talk to them, have them just interact with the community. So is, is there one or two common grounds uh, where people can connect and, and uh, converse with, with one another? Uh, uh, food resources is a, is a good common ground and sharing their knowledge of that and uh, being interactive in any community, whether that's learning the digital inclusion or, or any function that's happening like, you know, out in, uh, like for instance, New West is gonna have a, a pet day at uh, the end of June. Have the seniors out there just to, just to mix with the people. Okay. Who, who makes that happen though? Who makes it happen to make sure the, the people in charge of the, uh, people, the people in charge of any given event okay. have the ability that they could go and uh, solicit, like uh, have a poster up for people that would be interested right now you have a group of people that don't have a direction or you can't, you know, they don't know how to go and just ask if they could be involved, you know, but if they realize that here's, here's um, a good resource that could be tapped into, offer them the opportunity. It, it, uh, what's going, what gets lost, I think, in aging is a sense of purpose. And we know that everybody has that. So the bottom line is, ask, and they will be happy to do. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I found that, uh, like I said, when the meal started being delivered there, I was going, I go to meet them and then uh, distribute them out as people came down, if they need a meal or two, or the ones from the street. And then I found they were using it as conversation point, and then they were helping each other out, helping the neighbor out or whatever. They want to feel still useful as a as a contributing members of society, and that's what uh, that gives them the pride in themselves. Sharon, that's very good. Sharon, Donald, thank you so much for the time today. I'm sure we'll have this back when we do this on another Friday. But thank you very much for your expertise. Much appreciated. Thank, thank you for letting us have a voice. Peter. You're very thank, welcome. Thank, thank you, Peter. Our second interview today is Jenny. Konkan, is that Konkan? Have I got that right? Yes. Let me stop the talk. It's okay. Uh, second interview today is Jenny Konkan. Uh, Kyoko, have I got that right? Yes, you did. Yeah. And Susan Moore. And uh, ladies, welcome to this broadcast. Uh, tell me what one thing uh, would make things better for seniors? Just one thing each. Maybe I'll go. Yeah. Uh, I work for an organization called Senior Services Society of BC, and we work with all the adults 60 plus who are often uh, faced with homelessness or immediate, immediately losing their home. So one thing I would ask is if you have a unit to rent, consider seniors to be your renter. They have a fixed but guaranteed income, and there will be a long-term stable tenant for your rental unit. So that's my wish. I like that. Now, is, is there one place where you can, you can get these people, or is it there all over the place and you just put the word out? 
yeah, just put the word out. We have a lot of older adults uh, going through housing insecurity issues at the moment. So if you open your doors, we have a lot of older adults that we could recommend or we could, you know, sort of assist to be your renter, successful renter, for sure. And Susan, what's your comment on that? Um, I think if, if I could ask for anything, it would be to have more collaboration across different sectors and support of seniors. Um, with the health authority, with police enforcement or law enforcement, um, and so that different uh, government silos are actually talking to each other. Right now we see that there's a real lack of communication that exists between the housing sector and the health sector and folks who are living alone, who are isolated, who are struggling with mental and physical health and cognitive decline, they really struggle to be able to get into the health sector appropriately to get the supports that they need to live healthy, independent lives for as long as possible. Um, so something like a, a seniors minister or ministry would be a huge help, but just having those points of contact where there is that open dialogue, all working towards ensuring that older adults can live independently, safely as they wish to live. So you're saying that, that that's a uh, provincial appointment? A provincial appointment, or at, le at the very least, the will of someone in the health authority to have those dialogues, someone who would be willing to direct housing providers on how to best refer a resident into the health system. Um, just, yeah, right now we're working in very, very restrictive silos. So people who aren't able to advocate for themselves or who don't have large support networks around them, they often fall through the cracks. And who would that person be? Um, I think, I think it, could, it could be a couple of different people. It could be a seniors minister, someone who actually has the legislative uh, ability to make changes to the systems that are, are operating in our province now. Or it could be somebody within the health authority who is a decision maker and is able to set policy and provide guidelines and guidance on how um, health is conducted within the province. So, to put this in perspective, what are we talking about in terms of number of people and or the percentage of the population fit into this category? That's such a great question. Um, I don't, I, I, I couldn't give you a number for the province, but I can give you a number for our residents. We house over a thousand people in the city of Vancouver, just the city of Vancouver. And of those thousand people, almost 90% of them are over the age of 55. And 80% of our residents live alone and 20% have absolutely no one in their life. So it's a significant number of people who are living highly vulnerable lives in terms of not being able to access their social determinants of health. And that includes direct um, health supports. They if somebody has had a stroke and they're living independently in independent living uh, rental units, they may not be able to get to their doctor if they have a doctor. Mobility issues can be an, a, a challenge. Uh, transportation is often a challenge. Um, so if we had someone who was willing to advocate for more collaborative work across sectors in support of vulnerable populations, I think we'd have a better chance of you know, really supporting individuals to live um, healthy, vibrant lives independently for a longer period of time uh, with less um, critical incidences uh, affecting individuals and the system itself. Who, who is the minister responsible for this? There isn't one. So we have the BC Seniors Advocate who operates very much like the ombudsperson does in that they, they study uh, what's happening in the sector, uh, where the needs are, where changes should happen, but there isn't any legislative teeth behind that to really force change to happen within our uh, public systems. Um, otherwise, no, seniors- From your perspective, should there be? I think there should be. I think there should be. And I think there should be a, a ministry that would be able to bring together the different sectors like health, transportation, housing with a seniors lens. We're an aging population. We're all going to be seniors. Hopefully we all get to be seniors, um, but we're, we're a significant portion of the population who are voters. And 
who have been taxpayers and who need to use those services that exist. And it's not, it's not only a poverty issue. It's, it's an age issue. Um, you talk to, to seniors of any type of financial background and ask about whether or not they're taken seriously in the same ways as they were when they were younger, uh, whether it's raising a health concern with their health care team or looking at purchasing a house or getting a job, things like that. Thank you. Jenny, what's your view on all of this? Well, just to carry on to what Susan was saying, uh, and you asked, so in 2012, it was almost one in seven Canadians were a senior, but by 2030, only a few years from now, that number will jump to nearly one in four. So a quarter of the Canadian population will be a senior in a few years. So it's a very large portion of our population. Um, uh, my organization, Whole Way House, we work with seniors who have experienced homelessness in the downtown east side, and we partner with uh, nonprofit housing providers to provide on-site support services for seniors. Um, we also now have a pilot running with other nonprofits across Vancouver and Metro Vancouver uh, to provide those on-site support services to prevent seniors from becoming homeless. So the gap that we see is between housing and healthcare, um, which is really when a senior, uh, if their health is beginning to decline or their cognitive capacity is declining, they fall in this gap if they don't have a support network around them. So for me, in my, if my grandmother started to have cognitive decline, I see her often enough that I could notice and ensure she gets healthcare. But if someone is living alone, uh, if, if they're often isolated, if they've experienced homelessness that usually increases their isolation, um, they're not getting the healthcare that they need. And we often find that house, uh, housing providers are stuck between a rock and a hard place because they have to now do a crisis eviction in order to get that tenant the healthcare support that they need to be healthy and safe, but they're independent landlords. Landlords aren't the person to step in and, and be a, a, a support provider. Um, and so we do have, you know, Senior Services Society, Holy House, we, we do different but similar work in helping support seniors um, to hopefully age well in place. And when, if there does come a time when that senior needs to um, move to higher care for their health and their safety, then we can help coordinate that where they have a say in where they're going, where they have that autonomy. Um, but what really our core is, and, and I really appreciated what Sharon said uh, in the previous interview about giving seniors purpose, and that comes with a sense of belonging. Um, so we do community building programs in their housing so that uh, tenants are getting to know each other. So whether it's at a coffee program or an exercise program, they get to know each other, but they're also contributing and they're having purpose in their day to day life. And that creates belonging so that we see less seniors falling through the cracks because they're isolated, sitting alone in their homes, watching TV all day or um, not using, you know, their gifts and their talents. And so we want to really incorporate that so that they can stay healthy as long as possible, but also give them that autonomy and support uh, so that when there's a decision to be made, they, they are involved in that rather than, um, you know, an authority coming in and removing them or being faced with eviction. Well, let, let's, let's start with you and then work for the other two ladies. What free things could this audience do differently so that we, we'd end up with nine things between the three of you? What, what, what three things could I do as an individual to help this issue? Mm. Let's start with you, Jenny. Okay. Um, well, volunteering at senior serving organizations is a big help. Uh, often seniors are facing loneliness. And so volunteers bring in new life. Um, they are able to, you know, be a new face, something exciting. Uh, so that's really helpful. And we often just have practical needs as organizations to help support seniors. Um, another would be to uh, raise awareness around this issue that we are 24% of our homeless population in Metro Vancouver are seniors. That is that should be shocking to everyone that we've allowed our older adults in our country, our city um, to become homeless. And so finding out who do we advocate to, who do we talk to, who do we vote for, who cares about supporting older adults in our communities. And then the third I would say is reach out to seniors in your community. And I would say, I think through the pandemic, maybe we saw this more, knock on your neighbor's doors. Are you doing okay? Do you need help with anything? Um, and if there are seniors in your community, find out how you can just engage with them and, and be a support and a friend, um, if the, if, especially if there's no family around. Hmm. I like that, great. Okay. Thank you. 
Kyoko. Well, Jenny, you took everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> Have you created enough? So, free yeah, probably I will repeat. Ideas. I repeat again uh, for the out there landlords or building managers. Again, if there are units to be rented out, please do consider all the adults to be renters. Like uh, uh, we have outreach workers who support homeless seniors, and I'm hearing from my frontline workers that there is ageism. There's a selection process that our clients are not selected just because they are older. So that's something I really would like to bring forth today. So they could be excellent, excellent renters for many years to come. So we'd like to uh, that I request that from audience. And also, as Jenny mentioned, be a friend with an older adult in your community. Just to get to know them. You know, you can probably teach how to use iPhone, but they may be able to tell you how to knit a sweater. You know, so it's an intergenerational educational process and while doing it, socialization, that would be a great, great um, opportunity for both both organized, sorry, both parties to learn from each other. That's something I'd like to uh, request. And also, we are small uh, community-based nonprofit charity. We're always looking for volunteers who are able to help us deliver these services to our community. So if you can, please volunteer with us. We have grocery shopping assistance or friendly support calls. We're trying to support all the adults who live primarily alone in the community so that you know we're gonna be the ears and eyes for them to keep them safe and living with dignity and safety. So if you can, please volunteer. But I know everybody's busy with the work, you know, child rearing, what have you. If you cannot spare your time, then consider making a financial donation to any of the small support organizations so we can continue delivering these supports for older adults who need us. So those are the three, Peter. I like that, I like that. Susan, you have three. I'm, I'm gonna try for three, but I have to agree with everything that was already said. <laughs> um, I think uh, from my perspective, it's get politically involved listen to who your your municipal your municipal your provincial and your federal candidates what are their positions in terms of seniors issues where are they going to put their efforts and and really what has been their track record in terms of ensuring that seniors have the same human rights and access to resources as everybody else and vote vote for that vote for those things that matter um, secondly, I would agree with what Kyoko just said, donate, donate to the organizations that are doing really tremendous work. It's really hard for organizations like Jenny's at Holway House and for Senior Services Society to be able to continue offering the supports that are needed without having the financial resources to do so. Volunteering is wonderful and having that money coming in is really important. Um, it goes to keeping the doors open. And I think too, um, some of what we need to do is really you know, take personal accountability and ownership of calling people out, organizations out, programs out when they're actively involved in ageism and using a lot of the, you know, the stigma and the stereotypes and perpetrating um, the, the negative view that often um, many seniors are having to, to face or deal with. Uh, so, you know, no more joking about seniors moments and things like that to really, you know, really be intentional in ensuring that we are being respectful of our, of our seniors. Is there one person in the BC provincial uh, government that is responsible for this, for, for this uh, department? No. No, there isn't one yet. Um, I think there is an appointment and Kyoko, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong here. There may be um, an MLA who has like responsibility for the seniors portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who I that think Mabel, is. Mabel Elmore. I Mabel think she, Elmore? Yeah, she's attached to the Ministry of Health and their portfolio uh, includes senior services as well. There you go. But uh, as far as I can see that primarily their focus has been on long-term care facilities, which of course was important work during COVID pandemic. Many, many seniors you know, suffered from uh, long-term care facilities, but that's the closest that we could think of at this moment. And I would also include uh, the Minister of Housing, Minister Eby, 
has been, um, we've had a few meetings with him and it has shifted some focus towards seniors and housing and preventing homelessness. So um, I've had the opportunity to work with their uh, homelessness prevention plan for the province uh, to include seniors because it previously did not include seniors. My, my guess is that the provincial government are uh, far more concerned about this age demographic than perhaps you're sensing they are. Uh, and I would encourage you uh, to, keep, to keep pursuing them. Uh, I mean, they've got a lot on their plate, we know that. But this is a very uh, important um, demographic in our province. So well, let's stay with you, Keoko. Uh, who should people contact if they want more information about helping uh, seniors who rent? For Thank example. you. So yes, please contact the organization. It's Senior Services Society of BC and our telephone number is 604-520-6621. We are here from Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. We'll be more than happy to have a conversation. Let's do that a little, little slowly. 604-520-6621. Slowly. <laughs> Great. Thank Senior you. Services Society. We are located in New Westminster, British Columbia. Great. Is there one thing any of you would like to add that we haven't covered in this short interview? Yes. I think, yeah, I think one of the things that I would like to say is I've had the pleasure of working with Jenny and with Kyoko as they served and supported our residents. And the impact of the work cannot be understated. Um, it's the difference between someone sleeping on the street or sleeping in a bed. It's the difference between someone having food or not. It's between someone having a, a friend or someone to communicate with or not. And it really is life-changing. It's life-changing for the individuals who have the privilege and the ability to be able to get support through their organizations. Thank you, Susan. Well, uh, I look at you ladies, you, you, you look young, younger than me, you're attractive, but you have passion and purpose, and I think that's terrific, and I uh, admire what, you, what you're doing, and we're going to do this on a, uh, a weekly basis for a few weeks, and so if you want to be back on this broadcast, or you've got things that you need to say that we haven't covered, uh, we want to do that, so thank you ladies very much for being here, much appreciated, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for watching this week's Fridays with Seniors. And I'm Peter Legg. And keep tuning in and maybe make some notes. And if you can find a way in your pocketbook or in your hearts or in the abilities that you've got to help, give them a call and say, what do you think about this? They'd appreciate the call. They'd appreciate your input. See you next week. <laughs>